Hello, everyone. My name is Jean-David Zetoun. I'm an MD specialized in gastroenterology, and I work with the family. So this book, this book is about disruption in healthcare. It was co-authored by Clayton Christensen, which is now like a guru, and which is one of the most brilliant thinkers about innovation. This book was published in 2009. It was published in 2009, but it took almost 10 years to be written. And foremost, since this book was published, very little has changed in healthcare. Healthcare industry has not been disrupted yet. People still go to crowded offices of physicians who have to seek medical advice. Medical records are still not widely adopted. This is a photo from my hospital. And the electronic medical records that exist are poorly designed. It is still very difficult for patients to, to get some reliable medical information that is tailored to their disease. People still wait too long before being able to see a doctor. And they stay too long at hospital. And drugs are still systematically delivered in pharmacies. And those pharmacies are frequently difficult to reach, depending on your location, or depending on the time of the day. And of course, and unfortunately, there is still an increasing burden of disease worldwide, with many more and more people affected by one or several conditions. Why so little change? Why the healthcare industry has not been disrupted like other industries, such like music, retail, or transport? Well, there are many reasons for that, and most of them are being well known. It is about regulation. It's about bureaucracy. It's about the rigidity of the business models. And of course, it's about conservatism. But also, health is an absolute. It's an absolute like life or like liberty, and it is tricky to disrupt an absolute. If I told you that I wanted to disrupt democracy, I'm not sure yet that you would support me here, and you would probably be right to argue against me. And there is one last set of reasons, is that the medical industry and the digital industry are very far from each other in their rules. For instance, the, the medical industry is highly regulated, whereas the digital industry is not much regulated. Also, the medical industry is very capital intensive, whereas the digital industry, digital products are, are quite cheap to develop. The cycles in the medical industry are very long, whereas it is quite short to develop a digital product. And also, the cycles are much more risky in their technical aspects in the healthcare industry, whereas the technical risk is low in the digital industry, but the commercial risk is much higher because competition is harder. And at last, the protection in the medical industry comes from the intellectual property, whereas there is almost no intellectual property in the digital industry, and the protection comes more from the network effects. For all these reasons, when tech entrepreneurs get interested into the medical industry, they think it's like a prehistoric activity. For them, it's, it's totally, it's totally update, outdated. But there is at least a good point about that, about that delay, is that now we have a better vision of what is likely to work and what is unlikely to work. We now have a better vision of what we want and what we don't want. We know that the early promises of the beginning were for most of them unfeasible and undesirable. I don't think that we have to regret that delay, and I don't think that we have to, to think it is unfortunate. Because now we know many things about the digital product and the medicine. We know, for instance, that nobody wants to be managed by a machine. We know that nobody wants to give his DNA to the insurer, and then the insurer will exploit your data and will adapt your deductible to a potential risk. And by the way, this risk is frequently poorly assessed. And we know that no one wants to be tracked by a wearable 
and this wearable will transmit information to your insurer and then the insurer will add up the coverage depending on your good or your bad behavior. We know that nobody wants that. But we also know that we have many problems with our healthcare system. I hear everyday patients that are just dissatisfied with the excessive complexity of the healthcare system. This is the map of the hospital. This is the journey of a patient with a chronic kidney disease. It's from a governmental source. It's not very friendly for patients. We also know that patients are frequently injured by medical mistakes. Those medical mistakes, most of the time, they do not come from people because I believe that the medical system is populated by hard workers that try to make their best. But the system itself has not been designed for safety. We also know that people are dissatisfied with the concept of average. They, they don't know the average concept and they don't like it. If you talk with a patient, he's going to ask you, well, is this medication is going to relieve my symptoms? It depends. We don't know. Let's try. It works in 50% of cases. If it doesn't work, we'll switch to another medicine. But people are dissatisfied with that. There is no average patient. Average is OK for population, but it's not OK for people. And we know also that the user experience in hospitals is very poor. And you know this is true, and you know that we had problems in France with that. We also know that the estimates assess that the growth of the medical expenditure outstrip the growth of our wealth, and it's no longer sustainable. So sorry, I'm not a romantic person, and it's not a romantic party here. We're not going to talk about a vision or a mission. We're not going to talk about immortality. We just deal with people and their disease. France. France was running late. But this is no longer the case. <laughs> now we have plenty of entrepreneurs that work hard and try to improve the system. Those are not from the family. <laughs> now we have Emmanuel Macron, which was here four months ago at the family, and which is clearly disrupting the Parti Socialiste, which is our left-wing political party. And of course, now we have the family with his dress code from Antoine. And today and tomorrow, you will hear and meet great speakers that will share with you their vision and experience about the future that we need to build. I hope that you will enjoy, but I also hope that you will disagree because we don't want to lose debate here. And I hope that this moment will not only represent a pleasant time, but also a window of opportunity for engaging into projects with people. So thanks for being here and welcome to the family.